cataractcoach.com. Small pupil, shallow AC, stop and chop case. Pearls for success in these tough cases without using a pupil ring. Now, this is a complete cataract case. If you don't know already, if you go to the Cataract Coach website, yeah, you got to leave YouTube for a second. And one of the subcategories under the complete list of all videos is one that's called complete cataract cases. Those are cases where I'm the only surgeon operating. So if you only want to see cases of me operating because I'm a special snowflake, you can go to cataractcoach.com, click on complete cataract cases, and there are, I don't know, hundreds of cases of me operating in every case. It's like this one, unedited, shown start to finish. So it's a good way of learning for a young ophthalmologist. Now, you can see this patient has a shallow AC, about two millimeters of AC depth, probably 1.8. And you can see the patient also has not the best pupil. This is after multiple rounds of all the dilating drops, including 10% phenylephrine. We also put intracameral lidocaine with epi, and still this is about all you get. Now, this is enough for now. Now, here's the catch. Patient is a family member of an ophthalmologist, a good ophthalmologist who sends me a ton of patients, and I've known for a long time. And this patient's other eye had a lot of problems. There was initial surgery done elsewhere. There were complications. Patient had a vitrectomy. Patient had a uh, corneal transplant done afterwards. Another DMEC done. And the patient's other eye is basically at about 20 out of 200 vision. There's really just a lot of complications with the other eye. So this patient's been very, very nervous about having this eye done. So obviously pressure is on. And we're going to make a nice rexus here. Now, I've got a little bit of viscomedriasis. This is what, a trick that Bobby Osher taught me. And that is, you can use the viscologic to temporarily increase the pupil size. Even then, I'm going to make sure I get a nice, generous rexus. So I want this still to be a 5.5 millimeter capsule rexus. And so we're taking our time. And again, we have forceps that are marked off at 2.5 and, and 5 millimeters from the tip so I can measure it. That's going to be about 5, 5.5 millimeters. You can see the end there. That's good. Now, I'm not going to prolapse the lens out of the bag. AC is just too shallow. This is a high hyperopic patient. So instead, we'll do some gentle hydrodissection. I'm going to, temp, I'm going to blot the central nucleus as well uh, from time to time because I don't want to build up any pressure there. So a little bit, just tiny aliquots of BSS, just enough to get some hydrodissection, tapping that central nucleus if we need to. And again, I don't want to bring this nucleus out of the bag. No, 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 let's tap that down. I keep it in the bag. So can I rotate it? You know the saying, if it does not spin, you will not win. Now, I definitely want to win in this case. And so I want this thing to spin, and I want to ensure that it really does spin. There it is. Now I'm convinced it's spinning. So now we can do some phaco. And in this case, I'm going to do some stop and chop. Now why? Well, if I just chop it in half right now in the bag, like a vertical or horizontal chop, each half, let's say, is about 50% of the total lens volume. But if I make a nice wide groove here down the middle and debulk the central dense part of the nucleus, then when I split it in half, what's each half then? Maybe like 45% or 40% even? So I'm going to do a stop and chop. So yes, I believe you should know how to do phaco chop and stop and chop and divide and conquer. Why not learn all of it? Why limit yourself? So here we go. So nice groove there. I'm taking my time cleaning this up, getting the groove sufficiently deep in the middle. You obviously know that this nucleus is like an M&M shape. You want it a little bit deeper on the groove in the middle little shallow toward the peripheries. And now let's see if I can crack this thing and propagate that crack. There it is. And I really want to ensure these two halves are split. And once they're split, I can click over to the higher vacuum mode. Let's make sure. Yeah, you want to really make sure they're totally free from each other. And I can bring that one up. And notice how the chopper pulled one half away while the uh, uh, FACO Pro brought the other half up to the iris plane here. Now, the second half this, that's in the bag is good. It's holding the bag down. Now, this half, most of it's still in the bag. I'm just bringing up little bits of it at the iris plane to emulsify it. Again, luckily, not a very dense cataract, so it should be very straightforward. Taking our time here. And now you can see the pupils are already coming down a little bit. Now you're saying, why don't you use iris hooks or use a pupil expansion? I, I don't mind. You can use whatever you want. But I felt in this case, in my hands, the path of best safety and also least invasive would be to do this. And here comes a little chop. Just chop a tiny piece off so it can aspirate that down. And so in my hands, I'm happy to use this uh, phaco probe with the pupil about this size, maybe five and a half, well, maybe five millimeters now, maybe four and a half millimeters, and it's okay. And I'll stay here in the center. Look how I have the back smooth end of the chopper in that safe position towards the posterior capsule, just to be sure. So now all the nuclear pieces are removed. I can breathe, uh, breathe a, sea, a sigh of relief here. Now it's time for cortex removal. While I do that, let me tell you about the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. Yes, it is absolutely the best podcast, the top podcast in all of ophthalmology. 
We're coming on 100 episodes here. Every week, just an hour, I promise you will love it. It's going to teach you how to be a better and more successful ophthalmologist. I promise you'll love it. Anyway, cleaning up the cortex here. Now, here's the catch. The bag looks pretty clean here, right? I mean, you cleaned up everything, but can you be sure? So there's that last piece. Now, I think, look, the bag looks clean, right? So why don't we go inside here and let's put the lens in. But you know what? We have to check and make sure. And this is the difference here. Here comes the viscoelastic cohesive agent going in the bag now, filling up the capsule bag. Again, the bag looks sparkly clean to you. But ask yourself, if the capsule bag diameter is 9 millimeters and your pupil is 4.5, 5 millimeters, I mean, how much are you actually seeing here? So what I'll do is I'll get the eye oil in the capsule bag. We're putting a monofocal lens here, aiming for about a plano outcome, emetropia. Here comes the lens going in nice and easy. Open up inside the eye, get that in the capsule bag. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to ensure that this lens is 100% in the capsule bag and behind the rexes, and that the rest of the capsule bag is still empty. So watch, with the eye full of viscoelastic, I'll use this chopper, and look, I'll lift up, and what is that? Cortex, look at that, you missed it. You didn't even know. Let me just check all around, making sure. I just want to make sure that there's nothing left in the bag, and I want to make sure the eye well, both habits and the optic are completely behind the rexes in the bag. They certainly are, but that's our one issue. Look, there. Right opposite the main incision, nasally there, the patient has a large degree of cortex. So you can't leave that in the eye. So why don't we get it out? So using the coaxial eye probe here in one hand, and now using the chopper in the other, let's lift up the iris to expose that area. Look at that. And then, uh, no, don't aspirate the iris. Come on, come on, cataract coach. There you go. Get that out nice and easy. Beautiful. If you had left that in the eye, it would have caused a tremendous amount of post-op inflammation. It would have been bad news. So this is why you have to check. I'm even going to go behind the lens. Hey, cataract coach, can you center up the eye well and the visual axis? Okay, that's good. And now can you also center up the microscope? Yeah, looks great. Patient had a beautiful outcome. I'm so relieved. Patients are relieved. And my good friend, the other ophthalmologist who referred the patient, is also so relieved. So all is well that ends well. Beautiful case. Thank you for watching. Remember, check out that podcast. I promise you'll love it. I keep telling you every week because we're growing and growing every single week. It's everywhere where you can find podcast services.